and one. Good morning, everybody. Saturday, January the 8th, Joe Rafari, Brandon Graham, Igor Henriquez. Guys, week 18 uh, season, I was going to say it flew by, but it seems like uh, the season's been going on forever. So uh, Tennessee is sitting in the top spot in the AFC. Who would have thought? Definitely not Rob. And then in the, uh, in the <laughs> NFC, Mr. Ivermectin, Igor's guy, Green Bay Packers, and, and the Bengals, first place in the division. So, uh, Brandon, I guess take a minute to talk about your guys. We know that you've jumped ship. You've come back. Are you there for good <laughs> Well, hey, this is my inaugural season into into the OTB, uh, you know, NFL preview show, of course, too. But it, it was a really – it was a wild year, right? I thought it was great at predicting stuff. I, once again, I went through a rough patch, but then I kind of caught my stride a little bit. But with the Bengals, they're playing well, man. Zach Taylor, they have a system there in, in, in Cincinnati that's actually working. They're the only team that doesn't have an indoor facility. But they're still racking up these wins. Joe Burrow should be in MVP conversations. To be honest, obviously he's not going to win it, but he should be there. He should be in the Pro Bowl. It's ridiculous that he's not in the Pro Bowl. But then, once again, they lost to uh, the Jets, and they lost to you know, some other teams as well too, right? So that's one thing too. But Jamar Chase is going to be Rookie of the Year. T. Higgins is incredible. Joe Mixon's running the ball well. The offensive line is playing really well. So all the Delders that said that they should have drafted a, uh, an offensive lineman, looking back now, it's like, hey, they're, they're still the AFC North champs, right? It's pretty much what it is, Kings in the North. So, hey, they played really well. I'm so proud of those guys, man. First time in like 10 years, I'm actually like proud to could say, okay, I, I support the Bengals too, you know? I might have to do a blooper reel of all the times that you dodged your team. <laughs> <laughs> going to go back and forth? No, let's not do that, man. But to be honest with you, every Eager. time I did choose yeah. them, they, they, they messed up. But yeah, eager, my bad. Reverse psychology. That's what ended up happening. Yeah, you have to yeah. go against your team every week. Eager, talk about your guys, uh, the Patriots. Yeah, hey, man. Uh, you know, a playoff berth. Uh, I wasn't expecting it. I thought it would be a, a 500 season. Um, again, rookie quarterback. Uh, if, if it wasn't for, uh, you know, Brandon's guy, Jamar Chase, probably the rookie of the year. He's done a, a good job. He's game managed what he needs to. He's, he's made some good throws when he needs to. Um, it's going to be interesting. If they can come up with even a win in a, in a playoff round, I think that'd be a, a successful season. Um, and again, I think they're probably going to end up uh, facing the Buffalo Bills in a, in a division type situation. So, um, yeah, it's been a That's good, season. Been. The, the defense, the, the money they put in, um, they still, again, you know, lacking some probably more quality offensive weapons. Uh, the running game's been sound. I think, uh, Ramondre Stevenson's going to be something. Um, yeah, they've, they've surprised me in a, in effect that they, they, you know, they, I thought again, it would be a bubble playoff team, but I, I, they're already in with, with even a week to go. It was a, it was a very successful season in my opinion after last season's disasters. Are yeah, and they, they came back to us a little bit because we know we done, they went on that run. I want to say they went like five games at all or something like that. Miami Absolutely. also went yeah. on a run, obviously, yeah. we fell to the Titans. But, um, and then lastly, I guess, guys, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the Antonio Brown incident before we get into this week. Brandon. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so the <laughs> A-B situation, my God. So I've, I've watched a bunch of interviews. Uh, he was on the Full Send podcast yesterday uh, describing his, his story, talking about Kumbaya. Very interesting, but go, and there's always two sides to the story, okay? If it's his side of the story, because he looked really good in that route. It was like a deep comeback, great route. He shook the, the DB. He's still a very serviceable guy. He's definitely delusional. But <laughs> Bruce, Ari Bruce Arians, at the same time, too, was a, he lied and said he didn't know about the injury. He actually knew about the injury. You see the text. Put him out there, said you're done if you can't play. They're playing the Jets. Tom Brady still got it done. Right. I, once again, AB did not practice on Thursday and Friday. Right. So I've dived into this situation so many times, and there's obviously there's points on both sides. But I'm going to say, hey, AB is delusional. The media does spin a lot. That's one thing. The media does spin a lot. The media is going to say, okay, he has CTE, this and that. You can't diagnose someone with CTE until they're dead, unfortunately. So like, yeah. I hate people that go up and be like, yeah, you CTE. It is what it is. He's obviously someone that does not have the the best uh, control of his emotions. He said he stood in his principles. Um, you can still fault someone for that. But, yeah, I think that both sides have some points. I don't think they need to it, they need to end like that. But, hey, it is what it is. I hope another team picks him up because I think I still think he's a serviceable receiver. Uh, okay, Igor, I guess we'll go to you and I'll ask the question and then continue. Do you think another team will pick him up and then continue? He's, uh, he's absolutely done. He's absolutely yeah. done. I think, you know, I think uh, the problem with his situation is – Again, I have a hard time believing Antonio Brown because he just has, has a terrible track record in terms of these type of situations. I personally think that 
Uh, again, I, I think the ankle thing has been overblown because he, you know, he hadn't practiced on it. I think everybody knew that his ankle was an issue. Um, again, he was questionable to even play in the game. I saw that, that route where he, he broke that, that CB's ankles. He looked fine. To me, it was one of those situations where he wasn't getting fed and then he got fed up about the situation because the week before they had been targeting him like crazy. He had, he had a couple balls and then he got into an altercation. Now, the biggest issue I have with him is, is this whole thing and, and how, how he you know, perceived him and how he did it. Like, even if you are, let's say the coach tells you to sit down and, and do, there's no need for the theatrics. There really isn't. There's no need to take off your shirt. There's no need to, to you know, start doing stuff in the end zone. It, 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 all that does is send a message to other teams that if, you, if, you, if, you're, not, if you're having a bad day, they, that you're going to go out and do that. And then this media tour, especially yesterday, throwing guys under the bus. And you, you know I'm a top Brady guy, obviously. But throwing Brady under the, under the bus after the guy let you stay at his house, like gave you chats after chats, it, it just shows you what kind of guy Antonio Brown really is. And uh, he's a guy the only that... The reason he was on Tampa is because he let him, right? Like Brady said, I want him on the team. Or else there was, they were not taking him there. And, and then the whole thing is, well, if, if Tom Brady's... I think his quote was, if Tom Brady's my guy, why, why am I getting a minimum, uh, a minimum contract? Well, that's because you've been cut by three teams. Like, like you're, you're not going to get big buddy because you, you, you dogged... You know, the Pittsburgh got three out of there. The Raiders, you had Gary Raiders. Big Buddy. And then you ended up, like, squ squashing that away. He blew, like, 30 million. Uh, the Patriots, they cut him after like a week. Like, he, he's, he, he's very much damaged goods. He's a, he's a terrifically talented player, but his head's not, not in it at all, in my opinion, because he's – again, they, I'm surprised they didn't cut him for the fake Vax card because that, that brought publicity to the team that they didn't really need. So I think Antonio Brown is done because he uh, – at the end of the day, he can't manage his emotions, and he is a locker room cancer in general. So I don't think uh, – He's gonna. He's. I think he's done. I, I don't think anyone's gonna take a chance. He's. He's 32, 33. I think he's. He's on his last legs, anyways. But he, he's just too much of a problem. And I don't. I don't see anybody taking that on next year. Uh, now again, if if you turn on Tom Brady, uh, you'll turn on anybody. And, and, and that's just the, the reality. He can't be trusted. He, he talks too much in terms of the media stuff. It's all. It's all over the place. Well, if you watch the the uh, episode he had, the interview. He, I don't know if he was – okay, he wasn't dogging Tom Brady. He was like, okay, AB, Tom Brady wants me because I'm a good receiver, right? That's the reason why. We're friends because we play football, right? And then he's asking, okay, we let, you let him stay at your house. And he's like, no, I have my own house. So all these things, it's like, hey, some, sometimes, you know, the news coming from the horse's mouth can be more credible than what you see in the media. I, I'm not saying he's right. Of course, he can handle it different ways. But he said he stands on his principles, and obviously he's a head case, but – before this Vax card thing, he was doing pretty well. He was out of the media. What, what, did we really hear about him at all this entire year, or even but, last year? But there, but there you go. But his his thing in the in the press conference where they asked him about the Vax card is, you you guys are all about the drama. And then a, a, one week later, this guy's taking off that his shirt and then jumping yeah, around yeah. In, in the end zone. So, yeah. so don't tell the media is all about the drama when you're out there like acting like a cloud in the middle of the game. Like you're out of the drama. It's, it's adrenaline. Have you guys ever had like that adrenaline push, you know, when you're like, oh, you're just really excited. Somebody gets you, you know, really excited and you just, you I don't just do random shit stuff. off during the I've game. Had that. And, I've had that, but I've never had that. You're, you're a professional you know, not that impulsive. player. Not that impulsive, yeah. Not that impulsive. To me, that was like almost like a travesty to the game, right? It was just disrespect towards the game because you know that that's going to be a meme forever, right? And I think that Absolutely. that is probably the first and only time that that's going to happen in the NFL. And anytime anybody would do that in any sport, like, could you imagine in, I don't know, like hockey or uh, in soccer, if some guy just took off his shin pads there, like he'd be gone, gone the next day. Like that, that stuff doesn't happen. It's disrespectful yeah. to the coach, the team, regardless of what happened, right? Like you handle those things behind closed doors and maybe he stays the rest of the season with this team because with the Evans injury and the Godwin injury now for the year, right? Like they need someone. And they we'll needed get to him, it a man. little bit later. Yeah. Just say, we'll get to it later. But like, I think that Tampa's chances to win a Super Bowl are very no, minimal no, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. The injuries, I, don't, I don't see it. Exactly, yeah. right? Um, but with that being said, let's get into this week's games, week 18. Uh, we'll go back and visit last week's picks at the end. Uh, so we'll start off with Kansas City, uh, a set Saturday here, uh, on 4 o'clock. They're heading to Mile High. They're taking on Denver, 10.5 point spread. Um, Kansas City is you know, still trying to get that top spot with their win and a Tennessee loss. Brandon, Kansas City, 10.5. 
Hey, uh, Patrick Mahomes, his first game when he came in and believe in week 17 with Alex Smith was starting, you know, came in, played amazing against the Denver Broncos. He's always, he's like, he's just carved the Broncos out since he started. They said, Alex Smith, sayonara, take off. So, hey, Patrick Mahomes has always been a monster against them, and they're going to be out there playing for that number one spot in the AFC, right? So I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs to the points. I don't trust Drew Locke at all. Why would you? Igor. Uh, I mean, again, ten and a half in a division game is is you know a lot, but I mean, you got one team that at the end of the day has everything to play for, and um, and the other is pretty much done for the season, right? So yeah, I, I think the chief the, the Chiefs uh, will come out, um, you know, looking to win the game and probably looking to get up early so they can rest a bunch of guys down the stretch. Yeah, I, I can see the Chiefs winning by fourteen. Give me, give me KC, especially after the loss to the um, Bengals last week. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> that oh that that one hurt me man i uh i would have won a little bit if um if that didn't happen and funny enough i made that post brandon right away said i made the wrong pick and i said give it some time you're gonna come back and it came back to bite me i was like a lot of game left <laughs> yeah yeah i wish i didn't say that <laughs> uh, to be honest i kind of like denver here uh, but i'm gonna say i took casey i did a usually what i do is a, around wednesday i do like a, a midweek 12 game take out to Kansas City by 10. The fact that 70% of the picks are on the score are on Kansas City, 70 exactly, kind of worries me. But I'll stick with it. We'll make my five. Kansas City by 10. Uh, Dallas. Uh, Dallas is traveling to Philly. Philly's, you know, putting on a little bit of a late season surge here. Four points. Uh, I guess Philly still has a chance to make the playoffs here. So then nine and seven after that win at uh, FedEx Field last week. So Cowboys 11 and five have the division wrapped up. Uh, four point favorites. I'll go first. I'm going to take Philly uh, and that four points because. Um, I just think Dallas has been one of those teams, like Green Bay, that's been very good against the spread all year, and I think that uh, Philly's going to at least keep us close, uh, Brandon. Yeah, first off, I think you should definitely start, just like what Rob said, shout out to Rob, you should start, you know, single game betting, Joe. I think that's definitely something you should definitely do. There's a lot of money there to build the parlays. But, yeah, I'm going to go with the, the <laughs> Eagles. Uh, Jalen Hurts, you no know, God's looking out for him because he could have got really hurt last week uh, with those fans coming in. Sirian has actually done a decent job, right, in the latter part of the year. Um, Michael Gallup's out for the Cowboys to have less weapons right now. I don't think Zeke Elliott – I think Zeke Elliott has really dropped off production-wise. And the defense is decent, but I know I do see yeah. Philadelphia taking this. Um, they're both gearing up for the playoffs. They're both going to the playoffs. So, I see, I think the Eagles, you know, cap out the year strong here, the four points. And Igor? Yeah, I think um, – I agree. I think I, I think Philly, again, they, they did clinch a spot. Um, so, they're, they, again, New Orleans is the – New Orleans and San Francisco is the only one that, that we don't know who, who's going to be in there. Uh, I think, you know, I think Philly's going to want to, you know, send a little bit of a message trying to – I mean, they're pretty much – they can't move – they can't move any higher. I'm just looking at, at the, at the um, positioning right now. They can't move any higher than, let's say, fifth over San Fran. I know San Fran's got the, the, the Rams, so – um, yeah, I think it's both teams are probably going to be a little cautious, but again, a division game, you know, I love those three point situations. So if I'm getting four with Philly, yeah, I'll, I'll take Philly to cover. All right. And we'll, so I guess, uh, so far, all of us are on the same game. So we're going to move on to Sunday and let's start off with the Titans. So Titans, um, I, I can't believe it, but they're sitting in first place. Uh, weird season in the NFL this year, for sure. 11-5, and five, taking on the Texans. Who, guys, I think when we did the season uh, preview show, we all thought Houston might struggle to get a win. They've been very competitive this year. They've, they've done really good against the spread. Uh, Brandon's guy, Davis Mills, looks like one of the top quarterbacks in this draft class. He's definitely had a better season than Lawrence. Um, and to be honest, probably every other quarterback except Mac. But, I was just uh, say. 10 points? Yeah. Uh, 10 points for Tennessee. Because I'm a Titans fan and I know this is what they do, I'm going to take Houston here because I think that Tennessee is going to have some kind of scare. Hopefully they pull this out. It should be an easy win. But I'm going to take Houston plus 10 points. And Igor, we'll go to you. Uh, I'm going to take the Texans. I think, you know, Houston uh, at that 4-12 and 12 mark, you're looking at they're in a bit of a tie with the, let's see, the Jets uh, and also the Giants in terms of the draft positioning. I think all those teams are going to – the coaches are pretty much going to lay down a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm going to say that the, the Titans roll by two touchdowns. So you're taking the Titans. Yeah, so you the Texans. Texans. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the Texans well, yeah, I know. Well, I think the Texans are laying down. Sorry, yeah, I'm taking the Titans. My, my apologies. Yeah, yeah right. I'm, I'm Brandon. I'm with, yeah, I'm with Igor. I'm with Igor. Mike Vrabel, by the way, he should be in the uh, head coach uh, of the year conversation. Of I don't know year? why he's not. Yeah, he's played. He's done a really good job with that team. They've had over 57 players play on the active roster. I think even close to 60. 
ridiculous. So I'm taking the Titans for sure because I think they're going to get this one. And, uh, yeah, just wrap up even more because I think they can actually get the number one spot now yeah. in the AFC if they do win that game. So that's a big game, right? I'm taking the Titans. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll be hyped for that. Yeah, let's move on to Brandon's division, uh, AFC North. Uh, coming, your boy is coming off a win, but we are, let's go to Pittsburgh first. Sorry, Baltimore. So Pittsburgh's traveling to Baltimore. Big Ben had his last hurrah last week at Heinz Field. Uh, Lamar's out this week. We talked about that. Huntley's going to get the start. Um, I'll go first. I'm going to go Baltimore here. I think that Pittsburgh's adrenaline's done. Uh, I like Huntley. We talked about it. I think all of us like Huntley. And uh, Lamar, we're not really sure what's going to happen with him, but it looks like Baltimore is probably not in the playoffs this year. I'll take Baltimore three and a half, and we'll go to Brandon. Man, first of all, do you think the surprise of the year is the Tennessee Titans? I have to go back and just say that. They're the surprise of the year. I'm sorry, Joey. Not a biggest fan of them, but they still didn't really good job. But, yeah, on, on to the AFC. North. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, th- this game is really tricky because, of course, Pittsburgh, they do need a lot to win, um, you know, to get into the playoffs. I don't think it's kind of possible. They're kind of done. But with this game, it's just really tricky. Uh, but I don't see – I think the Steelers are obviously emotionally drained from the last week. I'm going to go with Huntley. They're due for a, for a win here. So I'm going to say Baltimore Ravens cover this game, the three and a half for sure. Justin Tucker, two, t- two field goals at the end of the game. Two at the end of the game. Okay, yeah. Igor. Uh, I think both these teams are done. I, I know they still have mathematical chances, but I, I don't see Indianapolis losing to Jacksonville. And the Chargers and, and, and the and that Raiders, whoever wins that game. Uh, yeah, whoever wins that game. Right? Is, yeah. So both teams, are. I think they know that, that they're done. Um, yeah, I'll take the I'll take the Ravens. I think they've been uh, unfortunately with all the injuries, they've probably been the biggest disappointment because they started off really really hot and then they really faded down the stretch. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll take the the Ravens to actually win the game and cover. Well, can I say one thing about Lamar Jackson? I think there's every other quarterback in the league that's not necessarily a mobile quarterback would play in the would play in this game if they had an ankle injury. He's one of the only guys like him and Kyler Murray are the only guys that cannot necessarily. Kyler can play because he can sling the ball, but Lamar Jackson really can't really play with his legs not really functioning. Big Ben's been playing with his legs not functioning for two years, still slinging the ball. Yeah. That's no excuse. That's all I want to say. Yeah, so, I don't know. I think that that ankle when it, when it first happened, you could tell that they were thinking he might be done for the year, and and I think they've been it was doing that whole week to week. But I think it's probably uh, like more more serious than they're making it out to be. Yeah. Okay. Well, he lived on a stretcher, so it's a serious injury, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, he, he's. He's basically like they're doing that whole week to week thing to just try to like throw teams off, but there's no way he was playing at all. I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, your guys uh, traveling to uh, Cleveland, so Cincinnati at Cleveland. We know that a lot of Cincinnati starters probably not going to play, and that's why the line is Cleveland minus six. Uh, maybe we'll get into some Baker Mayfield stuff later. I know Rob would have loved to have talked about that, but um, I'll go first. Originally, the line was three, and I jumped on it for Cleveland. Now it's six. I'm going Cincinnati. I think that they're still going to make this competitive. Their defense has been pretty good. And Cleveland's just an injured team that, you know, even with Baker, like I just – I don't know how many points they're going to put up. I saw the total there. I'll go back to it. I want to say it was like 36 points. It's Case Keenum. Um, 37 Baker's points. Baker's not playing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Baker, we have a better game. But I still think Cincinnati keeps it close, loses the game, though. So I'll take Cincy in the sex and Brandon will throw to you. Yeah, I'm not going to take Cincy in this game. I think Chase, uh, Case Keenum, those guys, and Nick Chubb's going to be playing. Uh, they're going to get a win for Stefanski. And they're at home as well, too. Uh, and with the Bengals being pretty much the entire team pretty much sitting out, I'm going to – all the starters, I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns to cover the six points. Yeah, Brandon Allen's in for this one. Uh, Igor? Yeah, I uh, I know. I, I think I, I like Cincy. I think a lot of the Cleveland guys aren't going to play either. I think it's going to – you know, if I'm doing the battle of the backup situations, I'll, I'll take the better uh, the better team to, to cover the, the game. And I know, like – I guess Cle- uh, sorry, Cincy knows they have a, a you know a, a whole playoff game next week because they won the division. But you know they they still have an opportunity. Uh, again, I'm not sure in terms of the tiebreakers. But if let's say if KC and Tennessee were to lose, I don't know how, how that would work out. But yeah, yeah, give me Cincinnati and the uh, the six. Uh, I think I'll, I'll take that all day. Igor, you talked about or Brandon, you were talking about the most surprising team being the Titans. How about the most disappointing team probably being Cleveland? I, I never I – know, I know they came out as, like, Super Bowl contenders, but I was like, that's – they're way too overrated at the start of the year. I never thought Baker was good enough to get to the get to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Or, or get anywhere. Yeah. 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 That, that's well, why – I remember we talked about it. Yeah. There's some more disappointing teams. Like, you can say uh, teams such as, you know, for instance, the, the Seahawks are, like, the most disappointing team. Yeah. That's what I would say. 
right? But anyways, that's there's yeah, a yeah, lot of disappointing like, teams. I was gonna say even if if Russell played, it would be different. But yeah, I hear you there. Uh, no, I was gonna say because I remember Rob at the beginning of the year ended up saying that this. Then I remember Rob's quote was the Browns and the 49ers might have top to bottom the two best rosters in the league. And San Fran started off slow too, but, you know, it looks like they're going to make it to the playoffs. So we all have Cincy, except Brandon's going to go with Cleveland. Uh, we're going to go to the NFC uh, East. Washington's, t- Washington's taking on the, uh, the Giants. Giants obviously have been terrible. Saquon's been terrible as well. Washington getting seven points as a very injured team going on the road to the Giants in a game that, you know, doesn't mean much. I'm going to, if I'm the Giants, I'm going to take those points. I'll go Giants plus seven. They haven't covered in a long time, so I'll take those points in the division game. Igor. Man, and the Giants' offense is just abysmal. I think they, they, they had, like, they had, like so yeah, it's a pretty sad. I mean, in Washington, besides that whole uh, debacle against Dallas on that Sunday nighter, they've been playing some decent uh, football. So, like, I, I haven't seen anything from the Giants. I mean, I'll take the, the Washington to the, for the seven points just because they – they, they seem to be the only ones really giving a dab, at least a little bit. So uh, I'll, I'll take Washington. Yeah, that offense is worse than the Alabama offense. I'm going to be really honest. The New York Giants have been terrible. Joe Judge should not come back. That entire organization is a dumpster fire. I'm going to go with the Washington football team because you know, they kind of gear up for next year. Um, yeah. Yeah, seven points for sure. This is a game that hopefully no one watches. But, hey, it is what it is. It's still NFC East. And it's the last time we'll call the football team because they'll have a name exactly. by the time uh, February second hits. They'll be uh, they'll actually have a. Fun. I saw those games. They look terrible. Commodores. Just keep the football. Is, is, is it going to be the I, Commodores? Jesus. Yeah, it can be like the Red Wolves. I I rather them. I'm with the. Yeah, they should just do the like freaking team. the Washington Sentinels and go like Keanu Reeves like in that freaking movie. Man. <laughs> I was freaking. Yeah, give it to Shade Falco. Man. Shade Falco. Falco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, the Bears take it on Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota's five and a half point favorites. Uh, Minnesota, another disappointing team. I'll take the the Bears here plus the five and a half. They've been picking it up, you know, for absolutely no reason. They've been playing better as of late, so I will um, take the five and a half for the Bears. Igor, wow. Now the Bear, the Bears stink away from Soldier Field, and uh, and this might be Matt Matt Nagy's uh, final game. I know Brandon's gonna miss him. Uh, I miss that guy, yeah, I think uh, I think the Vikings will win by a touchdown. Like I said, I think the Bears are away from Soldier Field, and they're just not very good. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, the Vikings by a touchdown. I'll take it. Yeah. Brandon, you're going to make your guy the last game? Oh, Matt Nagy. Hey, Matt Nagy has been – my goodness. He's been a show. I kind of want them to keep him just like Joe Judge, just to, just for the stories and the press conferences where he's like, this is no one's fault, but it's all of our fault. I want him to go up there and do his different, uh, you know, his analogies and whatnot. He looks like – he just looks unwell. Looks like he has not ate in like two weeks. Yeah. But uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Vikings here. They're gonna start everyone. I think uh, Mr. Unvax is back, Kirk Cousins. And if this is just a game that you know, all the sons of Mr. Ivermectin are playing in. So hey, I'm gonna take the Vikings with the points of five and a half. I was listening to a few shows and I sent you guys them as well. But apparently, um, you know, Minnesota's thinking about possibly firing their coach after this disappointing season. Yeah. And also, there's been some talk if. If Kirk Cousins is going to come back, right? Because I think he has one more year left on his deal. And I think at this point, you know, they, I'm not even sure. They made the playoffs once. Maybe they made it once last year, two years ago. But this is a team here where you're kind of at the crossroads. And if you know, you're paying a lot of money to a guy in like Kirk Cousins that, you know, I guess at the end of the day is the league average and you're not even getting into the playoffs, you might have to make a change there. But let's move yeah, on. But- uh, Tennessee, sorry, Tennessee division. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say they're, they're the Portland Trailblazers of the NFL. Like, they're just their treadmill team. I get rid. Like, which yeah, position would you rather average. be? Would you rather be the Washington football team's position with, like, you know, building to something, or would you rather be the Vikings, where you're like your field experiment did not work? Like, where, you know, which team would you rather be? I think I'd rather be. I'd rather I, be the Vikings because they got to me. They got the better pieces. I was going to well, say they Jefferson they got, they got, Young. Who do you they want? Got, they got a, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Defensively, I guess offensively, I, like Jefferson, you got Dalvin Cook. Like, there, there's good pieces out there. And again, Washington, in terms of the quarterback situation, I, I don't know if, how, how Heideke is going to really be. I, I don't know. Heideke, and, and I think Cousins is better than Heideke for sure. But, I mean, it's not much of an upgrade. But, I don't know. It's, it's two teams of flux, absolutely. Sure. I'd rather be in the NFC East, but the North is probably, if, if Rogers not going to be around for too much longer, you have to think that they're going to get better. If you're in Detroit's division, you always have a chance to do something too, right? So, tough. Um, I'd probably yeah, rather is. be Washington, but it's a tough one. Uh, the Colts traveling to Jacksonville. Colts minus 15. Colts pretty much locked up a playoff spot here. 
I looked at this one for a while. Um, I'm, I'm going to go Jacksonville just to cover. I, they'll probably lose by 14 points on a 15 point spread. I just think it's going to be something like that. Um, and I think that, you know, Indy wants to be rested and not have anybody get injured in a meaningless game like this. I don't know how much Jonathan we're actually going to see in this game. So I'll take the Jags plus 15, uh, Brandon. Well, the, the Coats still trying to get into the playoffs, right? Like, yeah, 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 lost. they had last year. Away, so they yeah. kind of need, yeah, they kind of need this win. Um, but yeah, I was going to back win, but I think that they're in the driver's seat. Yeah, yeah all, the, all they need, all they need is the W. But they, but they, they do need to win. Yeah. If they don't win, they, they could win. Yeah, and they've actually struggled in Jacksonville, to be honest with you, for the past like you know a few games. So I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go. That's a lot of points, man. If it was 13, I would take the Indianapolis Colts. I'm not going to Jacksonville. Jaguars. I'm taking the Indianapolis Colts to cover this game. Um, hopefully, 21 points, 17. It's gonna be really tough, but I'm gonna go with them. It's a better team. You are. I'm surprised that you're going to go with Joey because I think that the Jaguars will actually – a lot of guys are, are trying to, you know, play for jobs next year. And, they, uh, and again, they've actually been pretty decent against some good teams in Jacksonville. So, I yeah. think, you know, they, they get to play the Colts. The Colts are pretty strong. I think the Colts will win the game. But, yeah, two touchdowns and they'll, they'll cover the 50. I kind of agree with Jay's reasoning on that. Man. Are you going to agree with me here over the, when we're talking about Mr. Ivermectin and the Green Bay Packers, three and a half point favorites over the Detroit Lions? Well, I mean, he's, he's – <laughs> Who do you uh, know? Uh, 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 I got to go first. But like, like, first and foremost, how about, how about Aaron Rodgers calling, calling that, that sports writer a bub because he said he wouldn't vote for that him. Was, he, he, and, and, hey, never that, never met the guy, but he's a bub. Anyways, but, and, and now there's rumors that he, he's, he's been telling people that if they make the Super Bowl, he'll, uh, he, won't, he won't play or some crazy right? Like, 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 it, it, like, it, it's just, it's sad. That's not happening. That's it's, not happening, it's, man. It's, well, don't, listen, not don't listen to all those. It's, it's not happening because they're not making the Super Bowl. But anyways, yeah, I mean, let's not, <laughs> it's not happening because they're not making the Super Bowl anyways. <laughs> but, uh, again, okay, yeah, you got to, we got to get there before. The, the track record says they'll, they'll fall a couple shades below. Not this year. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, that's what I heard last year, too. Not, not this year. <laughs> Uh, it's whatever. Uh, again, uh, again, it's they're, they're going to be playing like Rogers is not going to play uh, three and a half with Jordan with Jordan Love in there. It is the Lions. The Lions are, are not trying to win the game simply because they want to get that, you know, make sure that they tr- have a chance of possibly maybe getting that first overall pick. And they're not going to do it because they think Jacksonville's going to lose anyways. But yeah, the Lions don't have anything to play for. Uh, yeah, the Packers will win by a touchdown. Uh, Jordan Love will do well against the, the you know, the Lions. And, and the reserves will do a decent job, I think. All right. Actually, you know what? You know what? Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going with the Lions because you know what? They <laughs> I'm going with the Lions. After that with the monologue. game. Because Jordan, because you know what? I'm at home. You know what? I'm changing my mind. Lions to win the game. Lions will cover. Wow. To win and hey. cover. Okay, Brenda. So I, I watched the uh, Green Bay press conferences and whatnot from all the guys and I, Mr. Ivermectin had a reason to call that guy a bum. He said he, like, that That guy's an MVP voter. He has a vote. And he said he would not vote for him because he's unvaccinated. That's ridiculous. And then he's like, oh, make me the joke. most unvaccinated player award if you want to. He's a bum. He's a bum. Straight up. I agree with, with uh, and he's I stand the, with Aaron. And, and, and don't forget, clear. he's the biggest jerk in the league. No, don't forget that quote. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, that, that guy's actually a Bears fan. That guy's an Chicago yeah, yeah, Bears yeah, fan. Yeah. Ridiculous. But, uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> Devontae and Aaron Rodgers said they're both going to complain. Um, don't know how long, because uh, before in the Matt Flynn year, they actually sat out, or Aaron sat out, and then came, you know, they after the bye, they played and played terrible. So he's like, just for muscle memory, just for us to be in the, in the mood we want to we play. And yes, with that sir. being said, that's the reason why that, that uh, rumor about him, you know, boycotting the Super Bowl is ridiculous. He would never, he was going to go out there and get another touchdown, get another Super Bowl, just like uh, Brett Favre said when he passes. Uh-huh. So I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers. Oh. Shout out to the Packers. The Chiefs has uh, Jordan Love's, you know, can't mess it up that much. So I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers here. Three to half. Tough. I, I was on the fence with this one originally at late. Detroit, and I'm going back and forth. I'll, I'll stick with Detroit here. It's just fishy because, uh, like, you guys know that I'm big on, you know, teams' records against the spread. And Detroit this year is one of those teams for only, I believe they have two wins. Like their record against the spread has been incredible, which is kind of fishy. But Green Bay has also been very good. I'll take the three and a half points only because also Jordan Love, when he did play, looked absolutely terrible. Now the conditions here are going to be a little bit more contained because he's going to be indoors. So a bit of a benefit to him. Um, And then also Detroit, Igor, like you said, not really playing for much. But at the same time, there's no um, unanimous number one pick in this draft. 
from what we've yeah. heard so far, right? So it's That's not true. like there's a quarterback coming in. You're like, we need to get this pick. So I'm unsure about that. Green Bay probably wins by a field goal. Take Detroit there. Eagle, what do you? Tampa Bay, eight and a half point favorites against Carolina. I don't know who they have at wide out for, for Tampa now with everybody out. I know they have a lot of tight ends, but uh, and, Carolina, uh, another team. Yeah, a little, little Scotty Miller. No, I mean, again, this is one of, again, right. one of those games where I think Matt Rule is probably going to get fired. Uh, a lot of, um, you know, obviously talk around that. There's a lot of distractions. Brady's going to have to rely a little bit on Gronkowski, on, on Brait, on Perryman, uh, and Mike Evans. He's there. They still got Mike Evans. But, uh, you know, it's gonna it's a challenging situation. I think it's a, it's one of those weeks where a lot of distractions, you know, some backdoor cover situation. I'll, I'll take the Panthers to yeah. lose the game by a touchdown. But then, but they'll cover. Brandon, yeah, I'm gonna. I think Leonard Fournette has a really big game. I think the offensive line has a good game. Tampa Bay want to wipe everything clean, wipe the slate clean from last week uh, and everything that happened. I, I just, I can't bet with the Panthers. They're awful. They're just like they're just terrible. So I'm gonna go with the uh, the the Buccaneers to win by two touchdowns. I'm going to go with you there. I think that Tampa's going to win this game. So teams' records here, Tampa's 12-4. and four. They're only 8-8 eight and eight against spread, which is a terrible record for a team with that record, obviously. And then uh, Carolina's spread record and win-loss record is identical at 5-11. and 11. I'm going to go Tampa here. I, I think that they're due for a big win. They've been, you know, this year they've been incredible at home, 6-1. and one. They typically blow teams out. Carolina just don't think has the firepower to keep up. I think Tampa would just maybe run the ball, control it, and uh, just squeak on like a 10-point win. Let's go to a uh, division game in the NFC West. San Fran traveling to the Rams. Uh, Rams have you know, secured pretty much a division with a win here. Four and a half point favorites against uh, San Francisco. Brandon, we'll go to you first. Yeah, first of all, the uh, San Francisco 49ers are, I believe, 8 0 against the spread against the Rams in the past eight games with, with Shanahan in general. I looked up that stat, I was like, really? Wild. Uh, yeah. But no, with this game, it's going to be, it's still something where, you know, the Rams, um, you know, can, can pretty much oh, the 49ers can clinch with with the win. I, I'm back and forth in this game. I think this is one of the hardest ones to kind of tell this this week. But I, I'm gonna go. With, um, I'm gonna go with San Fran. Uh, no, because that quarterback's gonna be starting. So I'm gonna go with the Rams Rocco to cover. It's questionable. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it, this is the hardest one for me to choose this week. I'm I'm gonna go with LA Rams to cover at home. Uh, okay. This is something I'm not too confident in. There you are. Yeah, this is a big game here because the Rams still haven't clinched the, the, the division because uh, an Arizona win will still uh, cause them some grief. At San Fran, if they lose, uh, and New Orleans wins, they, you know, they could be out. So, uh, you know, this, this is probably next to that uh, Sunday night or probably the marquee game of the, uh, of the week. So, you look at the situation, I mean, when you're getting four and a half, I'll, I'll take the 49ers to cover. Uh, I think the Rams will win by, 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 a, by a field goal or so. So, yeah, I'll, I'll take the, uh, the 49ers to cover. But, I mean, again, they could be out. They could be out. Uh, uh, who could be out? San Fran? Yeah, because I think if New Orleans wins, they're, uh, they're out. If yeah, they, New Orleans wins, they're out. New Orleans oh, wins, they're out. I'm going to go Rams minus the four and a half. I think they'll end up covering this one. Uh, Jimmy coming back from the injury, too, is going to be rough. I think they're going to put um, Jalen on, uh, on Debo, and that's going to be a match to look for two to be honest two of the best at their position in the game that should be a good one but i'm gonna go rams minus four and a half uh igor let's go to new england is uh six and a half point favorites going down to miami and uh, ace ventura <laughs> so uh make your pick first i'll go last they uh they always lose in miami in the last week always. So they always lose so don't don't get it twisted they all they'll, they're not gonna win the game they get, it's been like, a, a, even with Brady there, they always, when they go down for that game, for whatever reason, they always stick it up. Give me the, give me the Dolphins uh, to, to cover. I'd probably win the game. Uh, Brendan? It's a new age. Yeah, it's always a new age. Exactly. Mac Jones is a new age, man. I think this uh, losing in the last week in Miami is something that only Tom Brady can do really well. Mac Jones is a new coming of the age. So I'm going to go with the New England Patriots, man. Circle and you're strong. Once again, they want it. They want to clinch the division as well, too, right? Like they want to clinch it. But so it's gonna be tough. Oh, no, no, they can't. They can't. They can't clinch, they can't clinch the it. Bills. Yeah, the Bills. Oh, are, you're right. The Bills, the Bills are good. Well, I'm gonna go with New England to cover and win by a few touchdowns. I'll go with Miami plus a six and a half. Miami went on that tear, so they're at eight and eight right now. New England's at ten and six. Spread records identical. New England ten and six against the spread. Miami has a tie against the spread, so eight seven and one. Uh, I'm going to go Miami against the spread. I'm just going to say, so if both teams win New England and the Bills, will both end up at 11 and 6, but you're saying that there's some kind of tiebreaker because they split the games this year. Yeah, no, the Bills the Bills have the uh, the advantage. So if the Bills beat the Jets, the Bills win the, win the division. 
Uh, okay, yeah, they, they won. Uh, they won. Both teams won. Yeah, yeah I think it's one of those. Like both teams won a game, but then the the other like tiebreakers go towards the Bills. So the Bills win. The Bills win with the with the division. Okay. Uh, Arizona five and a half point favorites at home. Seattle traveling to Arizona. Brandon, who do you got in this one? Yeah, <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, I think this is the game where where Arizona Arizona has to capitalize. Uh, play. They're still playoff bound. I just don't believe in the Seattle. Um, they usually have really exciting games down there in, uh, in Arizona, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Arizona to cover, um, win by a touchdown. Igor? Yeah, it's, a, you know, it's been a bit of a lost season for the Seahawks. The Cardinals have been struggling a little bit offensively, so I'm a little bit you know, skeptical on that. Uh, uh, J.J. Watts like, could probably get to come back for the playoffs. That should help yeah. defense at least. Uh, yeah. I'll take you know what I'm, a, a tough division. I'm gonna take the Seahawks to cover, but the Cardinals will win. But I'll, but I'll take, take the Seahawks to cover. I agree with that. I think it's gonna be a, a few points uh, at the end of the game, maybe a go-ahead field goal at yeah. the end of it. I will take Seattle. R- Wilson, as long as he's playing, I don't know that he hasn't been the same this year, obviously. But I take Seattle there. I think they're gonna have something to play for there, just because it's a division game. Uh, let's go to New, uh, New Orleans, three and a half point favorites taking on Atlanta. Atlanta's one of those teams that all year we've kind of been torn on. You know, are they good or are they not? They're definitely not good, but they've covered a decent amount this year. So New Orleans, three and a half going to Atlanta. Obviously a must win for New Orleans doesn't mean they're going to, though, Brandon. Yes, yeah, so, so New Orleans is actually seven and one against the spread um, in the past eight games, I was told. Or against Atlanta, sorry, against Atlanta, they're seven and one against, against the spread. Atlanta, so I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to take uh, New Orleans to cover um, the three and a half points. See them winning by a touchdown or even two field goals altogether. It's a must-win game. I think Taysom Hill is going to have to play a great game. And I, I once again, Kyle Pitts might be out. Uh, there's a lot of weapons that are out. Gage might be out for the Falcons as well, too. So I'm going to go with the Saints to cover it. You know, I know. Uh, yeah, they, you're right. I think it was seven out of eight they've covered. I'm just looking at Atlanta's last ten against the spread. Push. Loss, loss, win, loss, win, loss, loss. So I'm going to go for Atlanta to cover in this one. I'm going to take the three and a half points. I'm not sure who's going to win. I wouldn't be surprised if Atlanta pulled this out because I'll New York, New Orleans is a powerhouse or anything like that. Um, so I'll take New Orleans. Or sorry, I'll take Atlanta plus three and a half. Brandon has New Orleans minus three and a half anywhere. Uh, I'm going to go with the Saints. I think they're, they're the motivated team. They know they need to get a, the, the W, and I think they all, they'll pull it out with a, t- a touchdown win. All right. Uh, we have two more games left. Uh, the Jets going to Buffalo. Buffalo is 16-point favorites. Mm-hmm. Brandon. So, I don't know if you guys remember, like, last year when they need to, you know, the Bills need to, I guess, clinch something or it was the last game, and they won by 50 points. I think the same thing's going to happen again. Every single time there's a big mm-hmm. spread, the, the, I think the Bills are pretty much uh, over 500 when it comes to big spreads this year which is not really a great stack because I don't know the exact number. But I'm going to take the Bills to just go, go ham at home in this last game because they want to clinch. You know, they want to get, you know, positioning and so on, and they want to, you know, cap it off in a, a good way. I don't trust the, the Jets to cover in that sense. I know they had a good game last week, but I'm going to take the Bills to cover at home. And I was going to say, typically, uh, Buffalo – where are they going to go with this? Oh, the fans. I was going to say, like, the Buffalo's fans, we know them all, the tables and everything. They're, they're a pretty wild bunch, and I think that, yeah, you're right. I've been there a few – it was maybe three years ago now with that with a few buddies. They play Miami. Both teams were out of it, but they always put on a show the last game because those fans yeah. are pretty rowdy. I'll, I'll just piggyback on that. I'm, I, I like the Jets. As you guys know, I've been doing the Big Bong for a few weeks now. Big uh, Bong. But, you know, it's been three weeks in a row they've covered the spread because, you know, I always look at those records. So the record against the spread right now is 6-10. and 10. They were 3-10 and 10 when I started riding them. They're now 6-10. and 10. Uh, Buffalo 8-6-2 and two against the spread. I'm going to go Buffalo there, minus the 16 points. I think that the Jets are pretty much going to lay down in this one and get absolutely slammed, Igor. Yeah, I think Zach Wilson against the, against the best secondary in the league in terms of, of points. I think that'll be a problem. I think he'll have a rough game. I think he'll be a, you know, a lot of interceptions. Uh, even without the uh, – with Tredavious White, God, they're still a pretty good secondary. So, yeah, I think they'll, they, they won't smoke them by 40, but I could see about three touchdowns. So, yeah, I think that, that, that works out. Bills by about 21. Okay. And then uh, I guess possibly game of the week, we have uh, the Chargers and Vegas going at this for, you know, the winner gets into the playoffs. Chargers are three-point favorites going to Vegas. Um, Brandon, let's go to you. So one scenario that can happen is if the Jacksonville Jaguars miraculously beat the Colts and the Raiders and the Chargers can literally tie and both make it to the playoffs. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, what so yeah, they can imagine that happened oh, and they wow. just like shook hands, right? So that's actually a scenario that can actually happen. But no, this game is going to be a pretty interesting game down in uh, Las Vegas. The gate, like the, the team of fate with the Raiders going up, up against so many things this by this year and having the last three games being like the games of the year with Hunter Renfro and this offense and whatnot. I like the Chargers lost to the Houston Texans. Okay, they got a got a big win last week, obviously. But the Houston Texans down the stretch, I know they're favored by three points, but I see the Raiders actually pulling this out and uh, winning, winning plus three points for sure. Igor, right, Brandon's going on those little uh, Euro uh, tie rats where you know teams got to tie three three to knock off uh, Joey's Italian team. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that would be horrific if they actually imagine if they actually did pull that off. Well, what a what a slap of the face that would be in the NFL. But uh, I like the Chargers. I think the Raiders, uh, you know, no, no Darren Waller. They've had their, their issues. Uh, and I think that the Chargers, I'd rather watch the Chargers in the playoffs, to be honest, because I think, you know, Herbert, uh, Eckler, Allen, they, they, you know, Bosa, like they're, they're just, uh, to me, would be a, a better team to watch the playoffs. So I'm going to be pulling for the Chargers. Uh, three points, I think that, that's, a, that's right where it should be. And I think that's where it'll lap. I think the Chargers will win by, by a field goal. They beat the, the Cleveland Browns and the Colts, man, in nail biters. Who, team of fate. Who did? The, the, the Raiders. The, the, the Raiders. And then now the, the Raiders. Raiders. One, of the center, one of the quarterbacks got booked for DUI, too, so he learned nothing from the rug situation. Like, it's just a team in all the Yeah. Well, he, a, they're in uh, Vegas, man. DUI a couple of days ago. It was ridiculous. This is why I thought the idea of having the Vegas team was just ridiculous. No, no, it was, was the it quarterback, one of the quarters. I think it was, I think it was oh, one quarters. of the quarters got nailed oh, for quarter. DUI. Yeah, they, they, he was, he was, they, he fell asleep uh, uh, again on the highway or some shit like that. I don't know. It was, it wasn't good. I think Vegas is just too nuts to have a team. First of all, they should, like I'm surprised the hockey you're, team is done really prof- well. You're a professional athlete. You got to know better. Your teammate just killed somebody, and you're out there doing that. Like that's just insane to me. But anyways, team of fate. I don't know. And, and yeah, I, have no I'm trying to Derek, right yeah, I have no trust in Derek Carr when it matters either. Like, I, I don't know. I, I just he just pulled it out two weeks in a row. What do you mean? When it matters. incredible. I feel like that's an old clutch. narrative, yeah. In the clutch. He's played a lot better right, this so year. So, say Igor, Igor has the Chargers. I, 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 was, I expected a lot from the Chargers this year. I liked Herbert a lot. Uh, Her- Herbert's had some times. He had more weapons. I know they got ravaged by COVID like a lot of other teams have. Um, but it's going to be disappointing because I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I have Vegas at this one, too. I think more people are definitely leaning towards the Chargers in this game. But, you know, being at home, I know the Waller's not going to be there, but the, the Raiders just seem to overcome every you know everything that's thrown at them. They're not going to win a game in the playoffs, but I think they're going to get there. Um, and, and I've always been a big fan of their D-line. Max and the other guy is a Nesbitt on the other side. Um, two, two pretty yeah. good ends, and I, I think that that defense there is going to swarm uh, the Chargers. I got the, the Raiders winning. Well, boy, that's going to wrap it up. I guess we'll do our five picks and then uh, yeah. the one lock. Why would you guys do that? I'll recap uh, last week's games. Um, so for Brandon, for some reason, only have three for him. Um, I have Atlanta plus the 14 and a half. We're going to have to actually pull up last week so I can see what happened there. Uh, okay, so Atlanta. Uh, wasn't, that whole, wasn't that that whole situation about the uh, wanting to go with KC, but then going with the, with the Bengals and stuff like that? Wasn't that the situation? Uh, I still think I took the Bengals. They, 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 didn't, they didn't cover, though. Find Atlanta. Atlanta was oh, playing the, right. the Bills. Oh, here's Brandon. So Brandon did the Falcons, Chiefs, Eagles, uh, and then he put Bengals with the uh, appropriate F- FML. And then the Cardinals. <laughs> was and that. that was the five. So Falcons, Chiefs, Eagles, Bengals, and Cardinals. Okay, so Cincy instead of KC. Anyway, so you did get the Atlanta pick by half a point because the final score was 29 to 15. So you hit on that one. Uh, Philly, I, Philly won, but they did not cover because they won by four. So you got that one wrong. Arizona plus six and a half you got because they beat Dallas. Uh, Cincy, you did get. And then what was the last one? Oh, that's what happened. So basically, he put Kansas Chiefs, played Kansas, Chiefs Kansas and played Bengals. Kansas. So yeah, you put Chiefs and Bengals. They played each other. So that, 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 that technically yeah, – so like, That's what it was. That's but not I think he did. did I put yeah, Chiefs and Bengals? Kansas. I you put, put yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, the paper, yeah. terrible. Wow. Yeah. Okay, it's Awful. bad. That's bad. That's, I was so focused on that game, right? That's bad. I'll just take the Bengals. Yeah. Yeah, you took – we'll give you that. So you went three for four because uh, you only yeah, gave the four bad. picks. Igor had not Philly bad. who did not cover. Uh, you had the Giants who lost 29-13. Uh, New Orleans minus seven. They, they did cover. They won by eight. Atlanta covered. 
Igor, you went four for five. I was waiting for that five for five. Wow. You got four. four, man. Good week Good for you. Um, I, I had Washington plus the five, nailed that. Uh, the, the Jets, which was my pick of the week, plus 14. I hit that. They almost won the game. Uh, I had Vegas plus eight and a half. Uh, Chicago minus seven, guys. I went four for five. Kansas City did me very dirty last week. Four for five. So, did Washington, did go, Jets. Did I go four for – oh, no, because Philly, Philly and the Giants didn't, right? So, that's – oh, I got three. So four for oh, five. Oh, my mistake. The Giants did not. You got three. Yeah, yeah. okay. I was going to say, because that would have hurt me more if I had, I had missed it up by one. Yeah, but you went three. three. I got four. Brandon. Okay, yeah, so, Brandon, the one, so basically, the one that I have here on the spread, so for Brandon, it ended up being Philly – who didn't cover, and then there was the Rams, Cincy, Rams. Atlanta, and Arizona is what I got here for Brandon afterwards, yeah. after all the all was said and done. <laughs> yeah, all all said you have a by, by my count, he, he got – the, the Rams cover? Six, the, six, the Rams? Six, six points. Uh, the Rams? Rams both or minus six. No, they won by one. Okay, so Bradley got Philly and the, and the Rams wrong, and they got Cincy, Atlanta, and Arizona right. Three for five. Yeah, exactly. Three for five. Three for five. Three you got yeah. three for five. Okay. Not bad. Uh, who wants, not bad. Yeah, not bad. No. Uh, who wants to go uh, first? All righty. Let's, I, let's take a look here. Yeah, I can go first. I think I got my, uh, my five. It's definitely not yeah. – the f- <laughs> definitely be a tough five. But, uh, you know, I think that some of these teams have something to play for. So, I'm going to go with Philly. Um, plus the four points uh, against the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go Tennessee. I'm really going to ride with Tennessee here. Uh, you know what? Take the Tennessee at the high tight ends out. That's tough. I'm going to go Raiders, Philadelphia, uh, Arizona Cardinals, uh, New Orleans Saints. And you know what? I'm going to uh, – this is tough. You know, I'm going to go against what I said. I'm going to go Jacksonville Jaguars as well. Jags, that plus was 15? Plus 15, yeah. All Definitely right. probably my worst slate of the, the year. Igor. All right, so I'm going to go the Dolphins plus the six and a half against my Patriots because that's, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, I'm going to go with the Ravens. So, actually, the Ravens are favored by three and a half. Oof. Actually, yeah. you know what? No, I'm going to forget that. I'm going to go Saints three and a half. I'm going to go 49ers plus four and a half. Uh, Seahawks plus five and a half. And uh, that's four, right? Yeah. Uh, and give me and give me the Lions plus three and a half. Wow. You would you would take the Lions. Every time you take the uh, Lions, they lose I, think, by four know, I, I really think that, that Rodgers will play one series and then it'll be the backups and then and yeah, Detroit's actually been playing pretty well offensively. That I'm in Saint uh, Saint Brown. They they've been p- playing pretty decently. So, uh, yeah, I think I think they they're fighting for jobs. I, I think they'll, they'll keep that close, especially with the backups in. All right, so my five is going to be uh, Tampa minus eight and a half. I'm going to go Giants plus seven, uh, Seattle plus five and a half, Rams minus four and a half, and Philly plus the four. All right. I want to throw him up. Like, I'm going to do an honorary pick because Brandon dropped the honorary picks in there. Like, official <laughs> one. <laughs> I'll take Buffalo minus 16 as my honorary pick. Then uh, I want to, I want to take, uh, yeah, I want to take the New England Patriots as my honorary pick as well. Okay. New England. Yeah. I, I really, I was really just on the fence about that. Okay. And then uh, one lock for the week, guys. Oh, man. This is the tough one. You want to go first, Igor? I'm still trying to figure out my lock. Oh, yes, the lock of the week. Uh, oof. Uh, I got. I got to go, 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 go with history. I got to go with, go with uh, Tom Brady minus eight and a half at home. Uh, I think they're going to. I got to go with. Embarrassed by Antonio Brown. I got to go with history. I, I got to take the Dolphins in Miami and, uh, on the last week. They always tend to do it. I'm going to. I'm going to take them to cover that six and a half. I think I'm going to go with uh, – this is, this is tough. It's game of the week. I'm going to go with the Raiders uh, plus three and a half. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Yeah, okay, yeah. so – I'm going to go with the Raiders. Brandon's got Raiders for lock of the week plus three. Igor has uh, Miami plus six and a half. And I'm going to go uh, Tampa minus eight and a half. This is a tough week, man. Can we go over my picks once again? I just want to – this is tough. I kind of – no, no, don't even do that, actually. I'm just going to go. I'm going to ride with it. Screw it. Screw it. So okay. five, five for five. I'll read over the picks. I'll read over the picks one more time. Uh, so I'll go with uh, mine first. I have Tampa minus eight and a half. 
Giants plus seven, Seattle plus five and a half, Rams minus four and a half, Philly minus four. Igor has Miami plus six and a half, New Orleans minus three and a half, San Fran plus four and a half, Seattle uh, plus five and a half, and Detroit plus three and a half. Brandon's picks, Philly plus four, New Orleans minus three and a half, Las Vegas plus three. Arizona minus five and a half, and the Jags minus, sorry, plus 15. That's fine. That's fine. All right, boys, that wraps up the NFL regular season. Uh, It's been a crazy one. We're going to see next week who gets the buys. If things keep up, it's going to be Green Bay gets the buy, and then also um, in Tennessee. Tennessee. So we'll do the division matchups next week. We might have to do it on Friday since the game's going to be Saturday and um, Saturday and Sunday. So Thursday or Friday we'll get together. It'll be obviously a lot quicker because more than half the league will be done. But uh, any last uh, closing thoughts on the week? Rest, uh, rest, in, rest in peace to John Madden. We, uh, that, uh, you know, Madden's been uh, on the legacy of the NFL for ages. So sucks. That I think his documentary came out like, and then he ended up passing away like two days afterwards. Uh, you know, bad timing. But yeah, you know what? A, a great broadcaster. And uh, I mean, we uh, we grew up on those Madden games and so forth. So it's definitely uh, a big time legacy for the NFL with uh, with that individual. So yeah. Um, he also has one of the greatest lines in movie history in that same uh, Washington Sentinels. You know, he's like, I, th- I think that guy's smoking on the field. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 was, he was great. Now the field goal kicker, yeah, well, the guy was uh, smoking on those 60-yarders and, and smoking cigarettes. <laughs> it was, uh, he was great. He was hilarious. <laughs> no, he was great. Rest in peace John Madden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a legend, of course. And he got to watch it with his family, too, the documentary. So I think that's a, a good passing there. Yeah, for um, sure. No pun intended. But, yeah, I just want to see the Bengals do well, man. I just want to see a good – this has been one of the wildest years. I think with the extra week, it's just been a really wild year. And But it's been good, the fact that we've had so much football. So I know we're going to miss it very soon, right? So, uh, no, it's been a pleasure being on this show. I'm going to hopefully continue it. And, and a shout-out to our three teams for – you know, all three of our teams making the playoffs. Who would have thought, right? Oh, man. Well, we can't – well, Igor, we can't – you, is you guys guaranteed or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're guaranteed. Yeah, we're in. We're just we're we're they're still battling for the uh, the division, but yeah, they're in for sure. I guess Rob's the only one that, that, didn't, that didn't make it this I'll year. Just say, could don't just Rob and those Broncos this year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately for him. Hey, Mr. Ivermectin, I want to give a shout out to Mr. Ivermectin, MVP. I didn't want to call it MVP again. It doesn't matter who's unvaccinated. Player. Most unvaccinated player and most valuable it's player is definitely going to win a Super Bowl. Biggest yeah, jerk in Ron. the league, according to some people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like that that'll be a saga in itself like it, whatever he, like again I, I personally don't I think they'll like I don't think they're gonna make the Super Bowl that's just my opinion I think it something that's always that's what you want no no something <laughs> always happens and, and, and all honesty like they've you know they beat a bunch of really bad teams the, the defense you know has done well with Jair Alexander out they're gonna get him back so that should help but there's there's definitely holes in that team like I I don't think you can legitimately say that they're like the astounding favorite to get out of the uh, out of the NFC. I think there's a lot of good NFC teams that that'll give them some trouble. So it should be interesting. They, they be beat, 30, hey, they beat the Cardinals. They beat the Rams. Yeah, he's unbelievable. He's just unbelievable. I'm sorry, you got to give know, him his flowers. I, again, we'll, we'll see if uh, if uh, if Tommy Boy comes back to uh, to Green Bay again. You know what happened last year? Man, not happening with Antonio Brown. Those man. weapons. Yeah, yeah those Tommy weapons Nash. are not there. That's what we say, right? We shall see. All right, boys, it's going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, Thanks again for the regular season, and we will see you guys next week for a wild card weekend. Have a good weekend. Take care.